the best chance of doing it like in a healthy mm-hmm. way. Like, let's actually be real. Yeah. So once I was like in my 30s, I mean, what are we doing here? Yeah, that's real. The, uh, like for real, because yeah. it's all cute and fun and games until you're sitting up in the hospital, you know, giving yourself shots, doing rounds of IVF. Yeah. And now you're taking out a second mortgage on your home because people want to play around for 10 years. Like Talk it's it's it. that real. Or now your life, the baby's life, you're on bed rest for however long. So I mean, Teach. I at least wanted the opportunity. Teach. And that, and I hate to say that because even for him, he doesn't see it that way. But for me, it's everything because I'm the one that's going to give us a family, Boy, not I, you, me. I ain't know about none of that stuff. I'm, that's what I'm, saying, I'm most just of- now learning about all that stuff she was talking about. I still barely even know about it. I am on a journey to discover, uncover, and recover love. Life is about helping others. Dear future wifey has been doing exactly that. You stated that women are to present and not to pursue. It has given us a a roadmap on how relationships were meant to be by God. There are still black men who love the Lord and their end goal is marriage. Thank you for teaching me how to stay lit, how to be intentional and transparent. You read your your letter, I cried. I just got married two months ago and I'm listening to the podcast so I can stay married. I'm Lateris R. Whitfield and this is season four these dating streets on the Dear Future Wifey podcast. Welcome to the Dear Future Wifey podcast. I'm your host, Latera R. Whitfield. This season, yes, these dating streets, it's about to get real. You know, um, but before we get started, are you still shacking up with us? This is season four. Come on, let's make a commitment and subscribe. We're on the road to 100K subscribers and we need everyone to do your part so we can reach that. Listen, we can all do it. Today, I'm so excited to have today's guest on the podcast. Man, when I saw what they did on television, it blew my mind. This is the, I would say, hands down, the most epic proposal ever. I mean, I found myself getting a little teary-eyed. Y'all know how I am. I'm a, I'm a hopeful romantic. I don't like to say hopeless because I'm a hopeful romantic and I love it when a brother gets it right. So without further ado, welcome to the Dear Future Wifey podcast my new homies, Quentin Brunson and Ashley Mann. How y'all doing? Doing great. How are you? Great. Oh, great. listen, man. This, we, we about to have fun. <laughs> <laughs> so let me tell you. So, Ashley, the reason why... So, a friend sent me y'all's video. And I said, this is absolutely beautiful. But what resonated with me most, and I said, I have to have this couple on this podcast, is a comment that you said. You said... I've been your girlfriend for so long. And you said it with such, uh, like, just so so exasperated. And I was like, what in the world was those nine years like? Or how how long, well, you know, it was just, I said, I first wanted to know how long it's been. And so um, how long did y'all date each other? Okay, so we met nine years ago. Right. And, you know, that's like when you're seeing somebody, you know, right. like, you know, once a week, twice a week. So we played that game yeah. for a couple of years. And I was like, OK, you know, I'm your girlfriend. So, you know, so we've <laughs> officially been boyfriend, girlfriend for almost seven years. But we've been dating and knowing and love at first sight. Right. Was it, yeah. was it you? I mean, it was it was something at first sight. <laughs> For sure, it was love. I mean, when I, was she was one of the first girls I met when I came when I came to Los Angeles. You know, what yeah. I mean? And when I first met her, I knew that she was different. There was some different energy, some familiar energy there. Uh, I didn't know if it was love yet. It was, I, love. it was love. It was lust. Yeah, it, it was a little bit of love. He was like, she was, like, was, like, was, like, was, like, was like, she fine. Yeah, mm-hmm. she was like, oh, she looked like some night late then. I was like, yeah. oh, she's a nice little thing. You know yeah. what I'm saying? See, see, see. That's what you said. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> All you need is an end. This episode is called The Waiting Game. The Waiting Game. So we're going we gonna to chop it up. All right. So um, tell me, how did this proposal come to be? Uh, so I came across a post online. Um, it, was, it was saying, it was talking about um, looking for someone who wanted to propose to their girlfriend in the most ultimate way. And, um, you know, we had talked about getting married next year. And I done heard the pressures from everybody. Um, so when I seen the post, I was like, this could be an opportunity to, you know, get it done. Um, and, get it and, done. Yeah, get it done. <laughs> so I, I submitted and, um, you know, I, I went through uh, you know, the interview, not the interview process, but like through Zoom calls with producers and things like that. And they ended up choosing me and we ended up doing it in front of Adele. He said, get it done. Yeah, get it done. 
Tell me, unpack that. What, yeah, unpack that. What, 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 <laughs> what, what, what is it? So you said you felt a lot of pressure. Pressure from whom? From everyone. Who is everyone? Her, her, her family, my family, our friends that were just getting married all the time and the having time. kids all the time. So what did they verbally say to you? Uh, what's taking you so long? What are you waiting for? Like, what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for, for sure? And I had, I had no idea what I was waiting for. I just knew that I needed to wait. That's why you know I kept telling them. I'm like, then do it. But I just knew it wasn't time. Like, you know what I mean? I just knew it wasn't time. Something was just telling me it's not time. And I don't know what it was or what the reason was. I was just, I just wasn't ready, you know? You just wasn't ready. You just wasn't ready. All right, before we go into that, I want to find out. So the experience, you didn't know what this was. You didn't know how you were going to propose no. or who it was going to be in front of. All you knew that they were going to do what? Provide the atmosphere or, yeah, or I, do what? I thought I thought it was just going to, I don't know. I thought they were just going to make a beautiful atmosphere and make it, so I didn't have to do the planning. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. like half the process of like, exactly like proposal you. was like, well, I, I, where, where are you going to do it at? And who's going to be, how you going to do gonna, it? I, if somebody could take care of that for me, I was like, all right, I, 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 I'll try it out. You know what I'm saying? And, um, they did that times a thousand. <laughs> you know, I said I was going to create a service of uh, setting up proposals for guys and um, create those idea. experiences and be like, all right, this would be really dope. Find out what are some things that the uh, soon to be bride likes mm -hmm. and, you know, infuse those moments together and create the ultimate um, proposal. And so did he get it right? I mean, is there any wrong with that? Exactly. I mean, <laughs> the crazy thing is, he knocked though, it out of the park. <laughs> the crazy thing is, she's always said, "Don't you dare propose to me in front of people." One hundred percent. Oh, for real? I, I know, was like, "Propose to me at home, yeah," because I'm gonna ugly cry. Like I work, I work. I'm an actor. I work on sets and stuff like that yeah. all the time. So like, she's like, "Don't do it on set. In front. I'm gonna ugly cry." I don't don't so do I, it in no restaurant. Like, I've seen that on TV a million times. That's <laughs> whack. So I basically had to ignore Everything all, all the said. stuff that she was saying. And to you do. said, I ain't going to just do it in front of people. I'm going to do it from the world. In front of the world. <laughs> he, whatever I say, he always does the opposite. <laughs> he said, I'm an ugly cry. I'm going to do it at a restaurant. I'm going to do it in front of the yeah. entire so world. So instead of ugly crying in front of, you know, maybe 100 people, he you added, you know, yeah. <laughs> and now you can Google and it. And counting. And watch it. Google you can watch it every day <laughs> if you want to. It's cool. Enough people tell me that they watch it every day. Yeah. So tell me, what was that moment like? You know, this is the moment that most women await. They wait for this moment. Uh, and sometimes it, you can't... What I found is even though women have their preferences of the proposal, the, the act itself supersedes the experience. Um, and even if a guy did propose to you in the quaint uh, moment in your home or apartment or whatnot, then you that's as special as it is in front of millions of people. But what was going on in your head? We see what came out of your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> well, first and foremost, it wouldn't have mattered where or how he did it, exactly. period. I would have been just as elated as I was in that moment. The shock is, is really, what I think, what put it over the top. Um, never saw that coming, not in one million years. <laughs> but I think, I mean, honestly, in my head, I was like, this, this can't be real. Yeah. Like this, there's no way this is real. Like yeah. I, we must have really got lit last night and this dream <laughs> is crazy. Like, honestly, for real. And I remember I kept looking at myself like, I'm alive, right? This is crazy. This is crazy. Of oh, the this moment you sit down, you sit down watching this, watching the, it just, the song, and, and it just kept getting crazier and crazier. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm looking around now. I'm nosy. Yeah, <laughs> you're looking around. Who around you? I can't. You know, Dale's performing. I'm all. I mean, that they edited. Who's the first person you saw? Lizzo was the very first person I saw. Very first person. I mean, then I couldn't stop staring at her because she was looking at me, and I'm looking at her, and she was looking at me. I'm like, okay, this is crazy. This is crazy. <laughs> and then right after. We actually didn't even kiss or anything right after getting the ring because Adele came yeah, out and yeah. I mean shook everything yeah. up inside of me. Yeah. I mean, even looking back on the video, I was like, wow, we didn't hug or anything. Yeah, I mean, it's fine. Like, we we're going to do all that later. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, legitimate. What was going on in your mind? Because all this stuff is happening. Like, like it's real. just, it's like, what? And I was like, this better not be for this better not be for TV. You better really be proposing. <laughs> Because <laughs> I'm keeping this ring. 
I was like, but as soon as the lights, everything cut off, I'm just running. <laughs> Meet you at home. You, you go take out with the ring? Yeah. He told you better not be doing this. All the shows and things he's been on, I don't know what kind of, I was like, this better not be punked. <laughs> not nobody come out from the back. I'm out of here. <laughs> I don't know what kind of show this was. But he said, no take backs. No take backs. He, he said, I'm here now. Um, how did, it, you know, the journey to this moment of proposal, how did this moment validate those seven to nine years of waiting? Well, first of all, I, and I mean, and this is no, this is just for me personally. I've always had this thing for myself. My mom was a single parent and I just always had that. I refuse to have a child out of wedlock Yeah. and I'm going to do it right for me because I deserve it. So I feel like for me and when I kind of get that, like finally is because I found the greatest, the best, the most epic dude walking this earth, got him to fall in love with me. There's no way that God is playing a joke on me. Like this has to end in like there's no other person for either of us. Like That's good. so to have that, to find that, and to be like that example for our families. Like we've waited all this time. We've done, you know, I mean, for us, we've done everything right and we've put our all into this. Like, yeah, I deserve this. And I deserve <laughs> this big rock. <laughs> so I deserve it. I deserve it. So was there any point in that that time period that you were like, if you don't propose to me by year 10, I'm out. Okay. So I, why he says that we were talking about getting married next year is because I told him I will not be your 34 year old girlfriend of seven years. That's not happening. I also don't really, the only way out of this is death. <laughs> <laughs> so he said, proposal or death. I guess yeah, I can. We ain't breaking up. <laughs> you ain't getting with nobody. <laughs> Because we we talked about that. We talked about oftentimes when guys uh, uh, date a woman for an infinite amount of years, then they break up. And then six months later, he's married to somebody. It's so true. And I've seen it happen to friends of mine. And you said you just exactly like that or where they've been together and wanted to have children and then they didn't. And then they got with someone else and had kids. So it happens all the time. I always knew that he would get it together. But of course, there's always yeah. that in the back of your mind. Like he used to try and play that funny game. Like, oh, we're in love. Why do you need to get married? Don't play that game. <laughs> we're not playing that game. We're not. Don't do that. Oh, he tried to play that game. Oh, but we're, we're what's going to change? We're already. Please. It's just a piece of paper. It's just a piece of paper. It's just a piece of paper. I yeah. said, so, so is a $100 bill, but you want it. Here's my thing. If it's not a big deal, then just do it. <laughs> it's not a big deal. Just, just do it. Just, 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 just go ahead and propose. Just do it. It's not a big deal. Me. It ain't a big deal. It's like getting gas. <laughs> <laughs> so, Q, what was that about? Did you really feel like uh, marriage was just a piece of paper? I, I had to figure out what marriage was for me. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, I think that was the whole, the whole time True. of the seven, nine years. Yeah. It was figuring out what, you know, figuring out myself. You know what I mean? Good. But there I, were times of you saying you didn't want to get married. For sure. I mean, I, I come Which from- Which is scary for a while. I, I, I come from a, a family who's been married for 36 years. My parents' anniversary was, was yesterday. So you've seen it model. I've seen it. I've At seen home. the model. Perfect Ain't that model. Crazy? 36 years. 36 years. They've been together since Great high marriage. school. They're Great awesome. marriage. But at the same time, all of my friends, everybody else that I know, I've seen the other side of that spectrum yeah. too. So I, it, I think it was just figuring out what marriage was for me because I knew what it was for my parents and what it meant for them and all that kind of stuff. My, but mine can't be like theirs. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. we, you know, we, we didn't meet each other in high school. We didn't do all that. So like, yeah, yeah. I had I had to find my own identity with it, and I think I I, I was just asking a lot of questions. You know what I mean? It wasn't that I didn't want the paper or I didn't want to do this. I think I was just asking questions to see where where our minds would be. I don't know. You know, I was just figuring it out. Yeah. You know? and, and it's a maturation stage that a man goes through. Um, and I'll call it the plight of, of, of masculinity and manhood is that we're, we go through the stage of defining what is our path in life. Mm-hmm. Is our path to have a wife? Because to have a wife, and I'm not mad at Q for making sure that it's at the right time where he's at because he could got married and Very divorced true. a year later. Very right? true. And so, so he says, I gave you what you wanted. You got married. 
You know what I'm saying? And it's like, but I was not ready. I did it for my mom. I did it for my dad. I did it for everybody else. Your mama. I did it for them, but I never did it for me. And so now when he came into an alignment with with, uh, his heavenly father to orchestrate it the way that it did, then that's where you got God's best. Very true. Very true. And and so it's interesting, but it's a, I understand it's a slippery slope because on the other side, you have women that have been supportive and ride or die, as they call it. I hate the word ride or die. You know, it's like, ride gonna, live. Ride, yeah, I'll mm-hmm. say, yeah, we're going we gonna to give and live. That's what we're going to say. Yeah, like yeah we're going to give and live. And so um, we, they go through that process. And then, like I said, they end up with a sword in the stick. And they're like, wow, he married somebody else. But the man wasn't transparent enough to say, I never had intentions of ever marrying you. Exactly. That, that you never, you, I knew from day one that you could never be the mother of my kids. You know what I'm saying? Oof, it's like, it's like, yeah. And they, but hurts. men, but men do that. They just act it out. They like, okay. And you bring it up, and you see it uh, modeled through their through their lifestyle. They're not choosing you. Yeah. You know, they're not choosing you. And so, how did you take what he said? So he's telling you that at what stage that y'all? Let me ask this: At what stage did marriage first start coming up in the conversation? I mean, I feel like it's always loosely been talked about. I mean, once you've been together for two, three years, yeah. you're talking about that. But so when we met, we were 23 and 25. Right. I was 25. So I mean, 23 years old, yeah. just graduating, yeah. just graduated with his master's and moved to LA. Like, come on, he's trying to sow his wild oats. Yeah, yeah. I need to be in the streets um, for a little bit. Got to. You know yeah. Got so to. I mean, I, I definitely understand that. But also while those conversations were happening and what I think is important, and I feel like- not a lot of, well, some women, I guess, may not want to say this because you might be scared of the answer, but I just kept telling him just so you know that the end all for me is marriage. So yeah. if you don't see that, then let me go yeah. because that's exactly what I intend to do. Right. Period. Point blank. This is what, this is it. I'm not yeah. changing my mind yeah. ever on this. This is what I want. That's good. So if you don't want that, then you should get out of here now. And if you're trying to work towards that, then, you know, then we should keep doing that. And definitely that's, I mean, he, he stayed in the game. You see where he's at. So what did you think, you when she said that, how did you interpret that? Uh, say that again, what did you say? When she's saying, hey, the end game is marriage. Yeah, yeah. and you know when I was saying all that. The end game is marriage. If you're not on this program, then go mm-hmm. ahead and... I think I think I always knew that game was marriage too. Oh, you, know you did. Mean? Like you I, did. I, 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 like I always knew I was gonna get married. I was gonna have kids. All that but stuff. But was it her? I was trying to figure out if it was her. Right. Mm-hmm. So I think I think throughout the, that time, you know, what I mean, she, but you don't want to hear that. You know what I mean? You, know you mean? don't want to hear and that. I'm not here. Yeah, yeah. I've been. I with us though. I've been transparent like to the T. Too transparent. From from from, <laughs> from start. You know what I mean? Because I. I like when I first met her, that familiar uh, energy that yeah. that I got was like the honesty. Like I I should I could never lie to this girl. You That's know what I mean? Good. I could be honest and she'll still. That's good. You know what I mean? So we we always had That's that. Good. So I think just like you know, during this process, she's become a better version of herself. Yeah, I've become a better version of myself. We've got goals, new goals that we didn't have in the beginning of our relationship. Yeah. We have careers that we didn't even start Very off true. with. So I think I was waiting for us to come into that place of knowing ourselves. That's good. Before we could even try mm-hmm. to do this thing together, because I know when I, I know I was still trying to figure out what I need to do, how yeah. I need to do it, all this kind of stuff, and where we're going, and, and how that going. looks together. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Like at the end of the day, she's looking for me for direction where to go. So I need to at least you know be able to say slow Lead. down or speed up or whatever. <laughs> if I'm the if I'm leading, you can't tell me to speed up and you behind me like you don't know what's up in front of me. Like <laughs> I am definitely a backseat driver. You know what I'm saying? Like yes, that, that doesn't work. You know, so it's just time, just time and growth and maturity and and that's 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 all it is really. And that's why I say there's no time limit to me. It's no like Ooh, because say that. you see people get married at 20. Like I had this couple on Kaylin and Kyra. They got married at like. 20 or something. It was really 19 or something crazy. But they're like big YouTubers, uh, got over 2 million followers, but they are a solid Christian young couple that, that intentionalize, I want to do marriage right. And we want to do it at a young age so we can model what what marriage is supposed to look like. But they, you know, his parents were married. They, they, they've seen all yeah. that. And so, um, but it's interesting. And when I, my daughter is 25 and she's engaged to be married. And she asked me, do you think I'm too young? I said, I don't know. 
I, I don't know. I can't answer that. I got yeah. married at the age of 28 and I got divorced 10 years later. Right. You know, um, well, two weeks shy of 10 years. And I was like, so I don't know. I don't know. I know when I got married, uh, I thought I knew all the answers. You know, I thought that it was going to be forever. But then you look at it and as you begin to grow and mature, you go, I just really didn't know. There, there's no book for this at thing. All. Like, there's so many different people in this world, so many different races, so many different styles of marriage, religions. Like, if you really looked at it, every single thing has happened. So yeah. it's literally like <laughs> there's young people that get together, stay together forever. There's yeah. old people that get together late, and divorce. Like exactly. everything has happened. Yeah. So it's not about any of that. It's, it's really not. about your personal growth with that person in your life. Like that's it. That should be it. But and the key that you said earlier that I don't want to just throw by the wayside is being brutally honest. You know, and she kept saying, oh, a little too honest. A little too yeah, honest. Yeah, because we've yeah. had, I mean, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've never, there, I mean, I've never yeah. been this Without, honest in a relationship before. This is, yeah, this but is you know what? Sometimes there's some things you just don't need to know. He's going to tell you those yeah. things that you maybe could have just left I mean, once once I'm, once I'm being honest, I can't not be honest. I mean, I'm no, not trying to. No, too honest. I was like, damn, nah. you got to tell me that. Nah, ain't no. <laughs> he didn't know that. You can handle it. <laughs> He's too honest. But that's good. And, and it's not even so much as honesty, his transparency. Right. When you start telling people what they didn't ask, I said, honesty is telling me the truth when asked the question. Transparency is telling me what I don't even know to ask. I want transparency for my woman. Yeah. I want to be able to... For me to be the smartest one in the room and for her to be the smartest one in the room, that we walk into an environment, she already knows, oh, yeah, I remember you told me about that girl. You you, you smashed that five years ago. I remember that. Oh, you for sure. Yeah, but yeah. like that type of stuff. And we just, it's vice versa. You know, that's the guy that, yeah. Of course, uh, I got a girl that does my hair that he used to date. <laughs> See, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> and that's how we met. She was like, I dated your dude. And I was like, cool. And I was like, you do hair? <laughs> what you say? You do hair? <laughs> you do hair? <laughs> And now she do my hair. (laughs) But you see what I'm saying? And that's maturity that people have a past before they met you. And it doesn't matter. It don't matter. It it has nothing to do with you. At all. Your journey is your journey. Focus on you. That's what the problem is. People are so focused. You so focused on what other people are doing and things that have nothing to do with you. At all. You can't even handle you. And you'll mess up what could be and what's supposed to be All with y'all time. because you yeah. worried about something that happened in the past with somebody mm-hmm. that that's the end. Remember, I that was just a season in my life. Well, I, I don't understand what you saw her in the first place. I don't understand what and then you start saying, Well, dang, what I see in you? You know, he's like, <laughs> Well, dang, what is it I see in you? Because you show sure nag a lot, you show sure complain a lot, you show sure do this. Yeah, a lot. Well, she's cool. I can see why I can see where you yeah, see. Can see <laughs> yeah, I'm cooler, but she's cool. I can see it. Yeah. I can see what you saw. Look, okay. She cute. She cute. Yeah. But that's where people are mature enough to handle real transparent conversations. So, Quentin, shout out to you for being too transparent, as she says, uh, to be able to share that stuff. And you said something key. You said, once I open up, there's some things that I want people to hear from this. You said, once I start being transparent and honest, why would I turn it off? Right. And you said that this has been the most honest relationship you've ever been in. Why is that? Um, I think it was timing. Like just coming to LA, like starting that new chapter of my life and all that kind of stuff. I just wanted to, I, I, didn't, I didn't want to play no games. And I just wanted to be this person all the time. I didn't want to have to you know, yeah. hide behind this. I just want everybody to know this is what it is. This is what it is. And then you can make your decision after that. You know what I mean? Like, I just didn't want to have anything hidden anymore, you know? That's good. That's good. What type of person were you before this relationship? Were you a person that was honest and, you know, was very straightforward? I am very... very blunt person. I'm very blunt. If you think you're going to get something else from me, that's just not going to happen. I'm not even going to candy coat it for your four-year-old. Like, (laughs) it's not happening. Um, Yeah, because what's the point? Yeah, You're going to find out one way or the other. So I'd just rather you find out now. I think that I used to try and play that game of like, not filtering myself, but trying to hold back the crazy. I'd rather just give it to you up front. See what you think. But she crazy cute. Uh, yeah. yeah. For sure. For sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> 100 from Jump Street. For sure, yeah, yeah. I was telling this dude, you're going to be my boyfriend. He was like, no, I don't want you to. I was like, yes, you do. And I think that's where the honesty started yes, too, because. I see what you say. I see what you say. You're going to be my man. He, he kept telling me no. Yeah. And I kept telling him yes. 
No, no means yeah, it's whatever. The no means no. He just couldn't see what I could see. I'm not <laughs> kidding you. This dude used to try and tell me all the time that he's single. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and then I would tell other people all that we were together. What did you say? You said something. Uh, if you took too long, what were you going to do? If you took... It was, I was like, I'll just change my last name myself. I'll just change it to your last name. I'll just come home and show you the papers. I'll wait till it goes through and get my new ID and passport and everything. Mm-hmm. That would be hilarious. If, I want to know somebody actually have done that before. It's, oh my gosh, I looked it up. I mean, it's not hard at all. It's not. Once I found out how easy it was, I actually was like, wow. I told him. I told transparency. transparency. <laughs> I told him I will. I'm. I if you don't give me your last name, I'll just change it myself. Well, I'll just be the Brunsons. <laughs> I said, "What's wrong with you?" <laughs> crazy. I told him. He said, "I'm just gonna change it." Is it crazy if they tell you? Yeah, yeah. She, so you thought she was playing when she said that? No, he didn't think I was playing. Playing? Did you? You knew I would do that. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you. Cute. Would she, would she actually do that? Uh, she, it's not hard at all. It's like simple paperwork. She, she, yeah. They should actually ask for more information. <laughs> like, I was kind of like, wow. So, so why was you so intentional about saying this is the one? If you take, okay, let me ask you this then, because this is something that is very debatable for me. Would you be the type of woman that proposed to him? No. Good. Why not? Because I'm a queen <laughs> and you're going to do it. Get down on one knee, whatever. I'm not proposing to you. This is ridiculous. Yeah, that was a... And, uh, yeah, if, if you... You can't force a man. You can't, you can't force a man, period. It's just not going to work. It's really going to make him do the opposite. So what, what was the balance with you when saying that or were you just manifesting? You wasn't forcing, you were just manifesting. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you know, but you, you, were sp- you speak what you want. Yeah, I like that. I was man I festing. I mean, even my friends used to think I was crazy. I was just at lunch with my friend on Friday, and she used to work with me during the time that we were dating. Yeah. You know, that's when I was trying to, you know, convince him. <laughs> and what she was saying, she was like, girl, you did it. I was like, I know. <laughs> I know. She was like, no, for real. We used to talk about you at work like this is crazy. Like this dude. Yeah. I mean, he knows we were dating. He won a radio contest, right? Yeah. Took another chick and told me about it before he even did it. First of all, who does that? I hit him up, right? I was like, dude. oh, you, you you won the radio thing. And I mean, we're seeing each other regularly. Y'all know what that means. But, we're adults. But, but when it's exclusive. It don't matter. There's a point. <laughs> we get on the phone. We get on the phone. I'm walking home from work. I'll never forget. I'm like, I was like, oh, I was like, you want the radio thing? I was like, are you going to take me? He's like, no, I'm going to take. Oh, I was like, <laughs> told me to my face and posted the chick online. <laughs> Looking stupid, taking pictures with like the DJ or whoever was there. A little bone girl too. You, you. Terrible. <laughs> and not only that, she could have been cuter than me at the very least. So I could see what he saw. Oh, my God. See what she was cuter than her. No, no, she was not cuter than her. Not even close. <laughs> so answer this. So this is good because, like I said, this this he did that on purpose. Though you see, but these were all these were all like I don't know if we call them defense mechanisms. That was cold. But it was like <laughs> I, I was trying to figure out if this girl was for me. You know yes. what I'm saying? Like she was so sure and telling me this and that, yeah. but I still needed to figure that wow. out. This is us women go through. Like yes. you know what I mean? Like that's so like. If now, this is the thing. Now, men can't handle that. Can't, now, no, if can't. I were to do the same oh, thing, no. he would, we would have been done. We wouldn't yeah. even be here right oh, now. His oh, whole ego oh. would have been yeah, we can't shot. Handle that at all. Shot. But that's why I say we have to learn to date differently. So dating is literally data collection. So mm-hmm. the thing about it is, and the reason why I applaud him is because he's saying, I'm single. We're not exclusive. Now, and I was you, saying... We're together. We're together. <laughs> Every time you say I'm single, be like, together. You just practice. Say it again. Together. together. It's practice. So Sometimes you have to. You gotta practice. But I already, I already had, I already had knew it because I had talked to my dad before, like you know, when I was you know getting ready to date and stuff, and I had told him the girl that I'm gonna be with, I'm gonna, ha- I'm gonna like pass her, and she's gonna have to like 
grab you because I'm the type. I'm the type that I mean, it's just the truth. Like I, I have dreams. I'll be trying to. I'll be just on the move, and I just knew that I was gonna pass the person that I was gonna be with, and, she gonna and she, and coach, she's gonna have to hold me and, and prove to me that she really want, want this to go down. And that was good. <laughs> that was going. I mean, it sounds crazy. And that's what happened. That's I mean, but that's, that's what happened. That's what happened. Yeah, I mean, she, 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 like you don't, you don't like the phrase "ride or die," but yeah, she was there, like yeah. from, from scratch. You know what I mean? Through all the, he definitely tried to quit it. Quit I tried me. to quit it so many times. You know uh-uh, what I mean? Don't she, say it like that. I mean, not like that, but like <laughs> just, just a few times. Just, yeah, a just a couple of times when I was young and dumb. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, I ain't yeah. know no better. There you go. <laughs> there you go. I've trained him up well. <laughs> trained up, trained up a child the way he should go. Mm-hmm. So, so when you were going through that stage, and so y'all were not exclusive, you made up in your mind that you were. He was point blank. I always say, believe what a man says and what he shows. Oh no, and he was do yeah, he was for real. So, so tell me. What was going on in your head that you just couldn't accept that? It wasn't that. I'm just always the type of person where it's something I know when something is mine, like not <laughs> like property, but like it's for me. Like, yeah, I know even like just just different things that have happened throughout my life. Like, I just know when something comes about or when a certain person comes into my life, like we are like, I know I'm meant to be good friends with this person or I know that this job is just not going to be it. I'm just going to mm-hmm. do it right now. Or So as soon as we met, I was like, there is this, the, mm. what was it? What was it? What was it then? Put, put, put words around it. What was it about him that you said this? I don't know. When I saw him, I was fixated immediate. Like it was like, like, that's, like that's candy me. to a child. Like it, I was just zoom, zoom. You're right. How do like that? His fraternity brother was my next door neighbor. So he came to LA and he was doing job interviews. So he was staying next door. Wow. So I, I literally remember I walked in the apartment and and I just saw him sitting. I was like, who are you? I never seen you. You're fresh meat. I've been over here. I ain't never seen no cute dudes over here ever. For sure. <laughs> yeah, oh, it was like I'm not even kidding. It was literally like a little robot in the back of my head. I I just looked past everyone. And I just saw the little weirdo in the corner. <laughs> Didn't speak much, but he looked like he had a lot on his mind. <laughs> so, dude, who made the first move? Me, I'm sure. She I'm sure of it. Made I just remember talking move. to him, and he wasn't speaking back. <laughs> and I wondered if he spoke. And then that was it. And then a couple months later, I was a couple of months later. Yeah, because he left. But y'all didn't exchange. No, we didn't. We didn't exchange numbers. Anything. It was just like you know, we all like you know got messed up one night, and then he went like he wasn't there for very long. Yeah, I was just there in town just to do the interview, and then I went back to. So we all just partied one night, and then he was gone. And I was like, all right, cool. And then a couple months later, I was at the pool at my apartment complex, and this dude was at the pool, and I was like. I just met you like a couple months ago. And he was like, oh yeah, I got the job. And I decided to move into the same building. I was like, perfect. We love it here. Yeah. <laughs> she said, I got a cute neighbor. What? We, so we talked the rest of the day. And I remember I tricked him into, I was like, oh, I left some up in my apartment. So then I, he came back up into my apartment. And then we we're up there talking for forever. And everybody was like, where did Ashley and Q go? Remember that? <laughs> He was down there talking yeah, to some other chick like already. You say was that when I saw him, he was already down there talking to some other chick. <laughs> so, he, so he could talk. <laughs> he can speak. He can meet. I'm a nice guy. He's yeah, extra friendly. <laughs> yeah. So so that moment when you then were talking, then we exchanged numbers. And then and then y'all just started just dating. Yeah, well, I mean, we literally were talking every day. The late, like through text, yeah, and then you know he was only on the you know, he lived the floor underneath me, so it was really easy to hang out. But he was always up front to say I wasn't ready for. A oh, for sure, one hundred percent. He said I'm not ready for a relationship. Yeah, he was not giving in. Mm-mm. This went on for some time. <laughs> yeah, it did. This game, <laughs> this game of cat and mouse. <laughs> this waiting game. <sighs> and so two years after this cat and mouse thing, how did y'all become official, exclusive, a couple? When he asked me to meet his mom. Oh, really? That was kind of like the real like turning point. You remember Mm-mm. when your mom came? It was like in April. I mean, this is so long ago. <laughs> you tell it because I'm like. <laughs> yeah. And then I was like, oh, well, why would you be, you know, I why mean, that was pretty. Why would you your mom yeah, unless yeah, I'm somebody yeah. significant? 
Yeah, and then his mom came and we, you know, was giving the she was doing the where's this going? And what do you <laughs> yeah. What are you doing? I will never forget your mom said, What's your five year goals? I was like, Wow. <laughs> you, <laughs> you really have married parents. <laughs> <laughs> Married parents, you know. And so, and so you were y'all were in y'all twenties, and they asking that question. Yeah, five year ago. The, well, yeah, I was like, oh wow. <laughs> I don't even know what kind of mumbo jumbo I made up. But and so, why was it important for her to meet your mom? I mean, it's my mom. I mean, like if anybody knows me, they know I talk to my mom. I I look like my mom. I, it's you know, my mom is. You know, it's mommy's I, baby, right? Here. Mommy's baby, my mama's boy. So, so, was that a relationship that you kept protected in other relationships where you say <clears throat> on a dating level, they're not about to meet your mom unless they're significant? Yeah, yeah, you don't really meet your moms, too, yeah. you, you know, and that's like the first first test, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, first thing my mom says, she can talk, can she? <laughs> I was like, okay, is that a good thing, bad thing? I know she talked a lot, but, but uh, they, they enjoyed it, you know, she's. She's gotten my mom to come out of her shell, and oh, my sister really? would come out of their shell. So it's like, yeah, it's been really fun. It's the energy is is contagious, you know what I mean? So even myself, like I, I was finding myself being the best me, like when I'm with her, you know what oh, I mean? That's cute. Uh, babe. You know, like you, you, some people be like too scared or too shy to do these corny things or be nerdy yeah. or yeah, do like whatever. This. Like yeah. I, yeah. So let's talk about this. <laughs> too shy to do these little corny things, and you say, "What? What? what how, how did y'all come matching today?" Well, she's always complaining. I think it. We must have been. We must have been. I think it was when we were traveling to Seattle or something like that. We mm-hmm. must have seen a couple wearing yeah matching outfits. And I always want to match. She's like, oh, "I always want to wear matching outfits." <laughs> She's at work. Can you get something matching? From I'm like, okay. And so you finally did. I just found something. <laughs> we match other times. Normally, it's him getting dressed, and then I just copy. Pretty much. But <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. But if he leaves it on, then we're matching. <laughs> see, ladies, you see the the compromise. You got to work yeah. it out. Work and it they out. don't always like men. Don't always know. You got to di- direct them. Direct them. Yeah. Maybe no, the for real. Just tell me how. Like I said, he used to say, you know, there's a lot of things he didn't use to like, you know, all the PDA and holding. Oh, this guy's PDA king now. He didn't eat avocado. Loves avocado. <laughs> they don't know what they don't like. I just have to, I tell him all the time. He'd be like, I don't like that. Yes, you do. <laughs> he said, yes, you do. <laughs> He'd be like, I don't like that. Yes, you do. How do you know? Because I like it. You like what I like. We like it. <laughs> it's so wrong with you. And then, and then he'll do it and he'll say, babe. I like it. And I said, I know, because I told you. And I like it. I told you you like it, because I like it. And, yeah. so, and so you decided, and I love it when I see compromises. I love it when I see balance. I love it when I see a couple that, uh, and especially a man that's that's wise enough to admit, heck, you know what I'm saying? I don't know everything, and I'm willing to pull on her strengths. And the fact that she wanted Y'all have match, and you said, "Let me go ahead and do it. Let me just let me. What am I losing in the situation? You know what right. I'm saying? If I can gain a little bit more of her heart and, and and validate her and get a little bit more of her affection, let's go buy these matching outfits. I yeah. love it. I love that. <laughs> they like it. Yeah, that's what he did. It's like when I saw y'all. I was like, you said y'all at the airport. What did somebody say to y'all? The TSA lady, she was like, oh, you guys are together, right? And I was like, yeah, that's the point. In case you get lost, return to owner, return to sender. Now you know who I belong to, don't you? <laughs> return to sender. Return to sender. Man, that is so cool. And so when did you actually say, or was it a thing that was spoken to say we're going to be exclusive? We already know you spoke about it yeah. way back when you was in your mom's womb. I'm talking about yeah. when did you actually say the day I told her she was my girlfriend? Yeah. <laughs> the yeah. what National Girlfriend Day, actually. It was, it was National Girlfriend Day, and I was, you know, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna post her to Instagram. Mm-hmm. He had never called you me. You posted on Instagram. I posted mm-hmm. to Instagram. And I you just like, said what? What you say? I don't know. What it was I like said. Happy National Girlfriend Day. And he's never called me his girlfriend. He posted a picture, of y'all? Yeah, it was a, a video actually. Okay. Or it was it might have been like a couple slides. Yeah. And he went in. I was like, okay, boyfriend. <laughs> told y'all. <laughs> told y'all ain't crazy. I told y'all. I'm prophetic. I am prophetic. Yeah. You get to a point where you, you know, you're it was run, so you're cute, running, though. You're running from it. It was so cute. It was like the perf, like, it was perfect. Because not only was he telling me, he told the world. He just he told the world. 
See, I like Q because he, he, he said he's going to do stuff in a big Which way. Which I should have known then yeah, he that this is how it's going to get. Like, it's so funny because that's exactly like I've been waiting on this. And instead of just telling me, he decides to literally tell. The world. The, the whole world. Yeah. From so, New, so you posted that. Everywhere. Did you get any calls from chicks that you may have been, that, that, that thought that they had a... Oh, uh, everyone should have known about me by now. I don't, I don't think so. I think, you know, you get to a point where you look around, you ain't got no chicks. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I was only one left. <laughs> I was like, I ain't really even looking for chicks no more. I guess it's, I guess that's what this is. I guess, then, right? I guess that means it's my girlfriend. <laughs> Last one standing. <laughs> Last one standing. Raise your hand. Ask like, you. Oh, uh, wounded. Leg got caught. Oh, my I'm, gosh. I'm still here. Hey. I'm still here. It's barely. Still but that's here. the beautiful thing about about it. That's and so you said you said by ten years. When did you start putting this ten year uh, shot clock? I mean, again, like I'm older than him. By what? Three years, right? Two years. Two years. Slow down, <laughs> Dak. <laughs> no, and for a couple of days, it's one year. So for a couple of it's like days, one, yeah, it's like you know. Um, and I just, I guess, I kind of started getting that. Okay, we've done all this. We've played the relationship right. We've, we've gotten to this point. I at least want to have the chance to a have a family, have a family if we yeah. if we if we decide that. Yeah. And b like the best chance of doing it. Now I have to like actually think like a woman. Like the best chance of doing it like in a healthy mm. way. Like let's actually be real. Yeah. So once I was like in my thirties, I mean. What are we doing here? Yeah, that's real. The, uh, like, for real, because yeah. it's all cute and fun and games until you're sitting up in the hospital, you know, giving yourself shots, doing rounds of IVF, yeah. and now you're taking out a second mortgage on your home because people want to play around for 10 years. Like, Talk it's it. it's that real. Or now, your life, the baby's life, you're on bed rest for however long. So, I mean, Teach. I at least wanted the opportunity. Teach. And, that, and I hate to say that because even... For him, he doesn't see it that way. But for me, it's everything because I'm the one that's going to give us a family, Boy, not I, you, me. I ain't know about none of that stuff. I'm, that's what I'm, saying, I'm just it. now learning about all that stuff she was talking about. I still barely even know about it. So I just had no knowledge that this was even a thing. You know, I, they always talk like, oh, yeah, you get older, blah, blah, blah. But you don't really, as a guy, you 35 don't really years know. old, they consider no. that a geriatric pregnancy. Yes. For a doctor to even look at me at 35 and it's tell like me that is, is, is insane, yeah. but it's literally factual. Like, that's a fact. Yeah. That's so a fact. I at least wanted the chance to get married, be married, not feel like I have to get pregnant tomorrow. And then again, putting us in the best, you know what I mean? Like, dad, we've done all this, played it all right. And then to get to that point and now we've waited too long. That's crazy. Like. That's crazy. That's that's crazy. You know what? I love that because that's why I say it has to get that honest. It has to get that transparent with yourself first. For real. To say, I can't keep playing games with myself. With my body. If this is what I desire, I got this biological clock moving. Yes, God can make stuff happen and people can have babies. You know, I think Halle Berry had a baby at 50. You know, yeah, you, of you course. You have all the stuff that happens, but those are anomalies. The reality is that you have an internal biological clock ticking that the longer you wait, the more at risk you are. Of and, and for you to be honest enough to say, bro, I can't, I, hey, like, like this is, I'm trying to have a fighting chance to have the most healthiest, uh, not only relationship, but, but, but pregnancy and childbirth possible. Yeah. And I have to, I owe myself this fiduciary duty to do everything I know to put myself in the best. For position. sure. And that is something that was like unwavering for me. Like there has to be some things that you like I just had to stand my ground. I was very for real about getting married. That like I'm vi- like for real. This or the or this is the the end. Like yeah. period, point blank. Like that's that's it. When you think about the end, but this is a person that you feel that you felt something leap inside of you to say this is the person. Nah, I he was gonna step his game up. One hundred like period. <laughs> there was no. That, I mean, that was the only option. So it was no plan B. No, get step your game up. That's the plan B. I mean, I knew that he would re like I knew that he would Yeah. Yeah. He's he's such a fast learner till he's a slow learner. <laughs> what yeah. you say? Ashley? You know, he's <laughs> so smart till to, to you know. <laughs> you like, man. You're doing good. You're doing, doing so good, good till you went left. <laughs> so yeah. So Q, how did that feel to have a woman that was patient with you? Cause that's all this is is patience. It's patience. I mean, which I really don't 
I have a lot of. I was about to say it didn't feel like patience while it was going on. Like, yeah, we, well, you was dragging it out. I dragged it out, but there was no support. It was there was no patience there. <laughs> so this was me on my own dragging it out. You know what I mean? Oh, well, it's, yeah, it's the truth. After just, thirty, that's when I was like, okay, dude. Yeah, I mean, I've always been so career focused. Like, I, I just wanted. I, I know where I want to be. You still are. I still am. Yeah. I just, I just had this vision of. I just, I don't know. I just, I just know where I want to be. You know what I mean? No, I he just, wanted every single duck in a row. I just, I just wanted to feel yeah. the urge. You wanted to perfection. Do it. It, nah, yeah. I just wanted to feel. He's like, like I wanted to do it myself. Like, like you said before. Like yeah. everybody else wanted me to do it. When are sure. you doing it? I hadn't felt it at all. Yeah. And if I would have did anything, it would have been me acting on somebody else. And, I, and I, that's what worked. I don't do. And it I, wouldn't work. Yeah, he, it wouldn't he work. won't. I will it not work. do that. So, I, yeah. yeah, you can't get married to someone. And do it for somebody else. And people do it all the time. All, all the time. time. All the time. Most all most the time. of the time. Yeah, yeah. I, I know people that are about to do it. Yeah, just because somebody. Dang, I guess yeah. I just gotta go and marry. Her. Well, yeah. or they say because they have a couple kids. Yep, yep. And the reverse, they stay married because of everybody. Boom. Else. And they stay married because of the kids. They stay married because they don't want. And you're like, y'all are miserable. Y'all are destroying each other. They don't care. We we. We've never done things for other people. We didn't have to, though. I mean, just just like, in general. From we don't have start. any children, like yeah. 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 Like I've, I've, I'm so selfish. She's she's you know not no. selfish, but she's living. I'm selfish, world, except right? <laughs> <laughs> she's living all real cute. I mean, you're in it. I'm not. <laughs> you're, in it. <laughs> you're in my world. You're in my world. <laughs> and so that's that's something that i believe is the biggest takeaway is don't do it for everybody else do it for you and make sure that you're in the right position spiritually emotionally Mm -hmm. mentally physically financially to say this is what i want to do and vice versa yeah and vice versa because at the end of the day that's a question that you're asking that no one else is being a ventriloquist speaking through you saying will you marry me you know what i'm saying it's like you said that you and then, because what happens is, is that in the reverse, when it's been forced, then the man comes back later and destroys the woman in the conversation. I never wanted to marry you in exactly. the first place. You the one that made me marry you. Right. And then she says, what kind of man are you that you going to, that I can make you do anything? And then you're like, ah. <laughs> That's so true though. Yeah. And it's like, what just happened here? Yeah. The most beautiful moment that you guys are glowing from now is reduced to a forced act. It's now reduced to a moment where you felt like it was contrived. You did it because everybody else told you. And now you just destroyed the most beautiful epic moment that that God allowed to happen because you felt forced. And no matter if it's in front of thousands of people or millions of people or in a quaint little area uh, in your apartment at a restaurant, as a man, you need to be able to stand 10 toes and say, I want to marry you. And do it for you because you're going to need to show up every single day in that marriage in order to keep y'all together. Oh, for sure. And he already does that. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Yeah. Like we've lived together for five years. So I always tell people, I mean, we're, that is, I guess, kind of like, I don't know. I guess I'm thankful for that portion, I guess, of things. Typically you don't want to live with a man for, for five years, but that, I mean, it's made us closer. Like it really, it really has. Did it, did it make, well, for you, well, I'm going to ask you because I know it didn't do that for you. Did it lessen the fact that you didn't have to get married because y'all was already living married? Uh, I don't think so. Mm-mm. I don't think so. Because I, I mean, made that very known. Just, I mean, just being in the same house and, you know, I mean, living together, it, it, if you got an image of marriage in your head, it is getting closer and closer to that. So it's not like, you know, you're not like it's good getting further away. You guys are living together. You're talking about getting a dog. It's like, all right, this is. We're, but we're, I don't believe in wifey. No, you're not ever calling me your wifey until yeah. I'm your wifey. Yeah. yeah so yeah. I, I just, I'm like a strong believer in that. And I have tons of friends that, and I just don't, I mean. I used to always say that too. When it, people say the, that doesn't make any sense. If, yeah. if you're already calling yourself that and he's already calling you that, then what's going to make him want to do that? That doesn't even make any sense. If you're, if you're already calling me your husband, then why I got to marry you? <laughs> It's like you're doing it to yourself because you are trying to make him feel better. I'm not making him feel better. I never wanted to make him feel better about the, yeah, I'm not your wife. That's good. That's good. Period. Did you ever try to call your wife? Hell. Nah. Or your girlfriend. Nah. Yeah. <laughs> Ashley funny, boy. <laughs> Ashley don't give a dang, boy. They be writing their phone, wifey. Y'all ain't married. Who's not married? I'm not playing these games. 
I watched I watched girls in high school. My my daughter's friends would do that in their phone. No, I'd be like, Why? and you're I speaking said, your own stuff into existence. Yes, you're doing it to you. Yep, yep. Just like any woman that's, I'm not gonna say we'll say finagled or helped a man down the aisle. I mean, you know that, and it's in the back of your mind too. So you please don't say you're surprised when the fallout happens because yeah. now you're just lying. Yeah, that's real. That's one hundred percent. And he's real. lying too. Like no one's surprised. I have a very hard time believing, and of course, correct me if I'm wrong, because obviously I've never been married or divorced, but any time to me that something has ended in divorce and people are like, oh, well, you know, when I got married, that's not what I was thinking, but there had to have been 100%. something yeah. in one of your minds. Some, I'm sorry, but there yeah. was something because we are so the opposite. I'm, we're both so sure. That it's like, you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. there's no, I, there, I don't need to be nervous about anything. Like, this, I'm excited to finally be doing like what was meant for us. We were why marriage was created. Yes. Like, we are the ones that are going to do it justice. That's good. For all the ones out here just treating it all raggedy. That's good. <laughs> That's good. Like, yeah. I, I did a TED talk a couple of months ago uh, talking about marriage, and you just hit the key. I mean, you hit the nail on the head where you say, listen, we want to do it right. Um, I, I suggested this idea of your marriage license should expire after seven years because most marriages end in seven years. And that's why it's interesting to hear that y'all's courtship was seven years, you know, minus the other two when y'all not, you know, y'all weren't intentional. Uh, but the fact that a marriage, most marriages ever since 1922 has ended in divorce around the seven year mark. It's called a seven year itch. And that's what happens. And so I talk about mayor's license expire, but also the need for continuing education courses upon even getting the marriage license upon uh, every year as you're going every year of marriage that you that counseling needs to be a common thread in marriages everywhere. Uh, And that's what's going to help keep us uh, longer. And so it's a it's a beautiful thing. And I love how you said we want to do marriage right. We want to be we want to be the people that got it right. And that's what's so beautiful about it. When you're intentional about that, when you do the work, uh, when you create the foundation and the framework of honesty and transparency, you can't you can't lose. Yeah. You, you oh, cannot lose. And don't and let's not get doing it right mixed with doing it perfectly. Or exactly. Doing, for like, sure. These are, it's these are two separate things. One hundred percent. It's almost hard to say there is a right. You know, as long as you guys love each other. Well, right and, for you. Yeah, yeah. It's right for you. But like there's no perfect way to do it. Like, it, well, it's foundational thing. principles that right is, which is the honesty and the transparency. If you can be honest and transparent with each other, then nine times out of ten, you ain't finna be smashing your next door neighbor and coming over here because you're gonna be like, I tell her everything. So if I do this, I'm gonna be telling her that, and then this can end really bad. Ashley may kill me, so I may not. I may not need to do that. You say, let me fall back on that. I'm just not finna do that. You know what I'm saying? And then when you're honest and transparent with each other, then you say, I know him. He's gonna always tell me the truth. That if he does go out and do X, Y, Z, that he's going to tell me. And then the minute that you ask him a question and he's like, he, he starts responding differently. You're like, you're lying to me. You've <laughs> always told me the truth. This is what lying looks like on your face. You know what I'm saying? Because you're so used to him always being transparent and honest. And so that's why I say the framework of honesty and transparency is what keeps everybody together. Because if also, if you have a problem, listen, uh, Ashley, listen, I, I need more of this from you. And vice versa. You're blunt. Q, I'm going to need you to do this. All right, I got you. You know what I'm saying? Because y'all not hiding stuff. Y'all just like, I I need you to supply these needs I have and my wants. And y'all know that y'all are working as a team. And that's the foundational principles that keep a marriage together. For sure. We have Mm -hmm. a lot of very tough conversations. But I always say this. It's about how you argue too. We never like just leap. Like there's never, we're never just arguing for days. That is not a thing. That's not how we get down. Yeah. It's get it done and we're on to the next thing. <laughs> it's get it done. Like, so that's another reason too. Like we argue very well. Good. We do. We just get it done and, and we're on to the next thing. <laughs> I mean, seriously, I'm not going to say, well, hopefully you should never go to bed angry, yeah. which normally we don't because again, we'd like to just squash it, but. Yeah, if you're not willing, if you're not gonna move past it, then then what are we doing? We're just gonna do fight. We we're gonna make the whole week just oh bad. Oh my gosh, just because, that's so terrible. Yeah, I can't even imagine. In multiple of those occasions, though, 
the only way for us to have grown in these situations is to get this argument done. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like a lot of that so stuff many good is things like, have come from it. Like, yes. If, yeah. if you're comfortable knowing that, okay, you might disagree or argue a little bit, but after this, usually what happens after this is we become stronger and, and, and be better. I think it, 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 you're not as afraid to get dirty. Yes. Oh, for sure. We're definitely you not I mean? like afraid. If, any, if like you sure. said, needs, wants, <laughs> anything, like I'm not afraid to get dirty anymore mm-hmm. because I know that I need to get, I need to communicate this period. Mm. No matter how it looks on the other end. Or, and he does. This is what I got to say. And, you, and let's, let's, let's do it. Let's even if it hurts, hurts, I'm not going to say it hurts my feelings, but yeah, even if it hurts my feelings. I mean, it's not intentional to hurt no. feelings. It's just something that's very true and honest to me. Mm-hmm. And it, it hurts me more not not exactly. being able to communicate it with you. You know what I mean? Like that's good. That's good. That's good. So when is this date? Have y'all picked out a date yet? Not yet. Well, we're going. to, Yeah. I mean, she would can't be past ten years, or you know. It's no. Just, no. <laughs> I'm talking the shot clock of the ten years. Man's in good standing right now. <laughs> well, we're, we're we're building as much anticipation as we can. Uh huh. Yes. For for, yeah. for good reason. I already know what you're doing. We talk, so, so I want uh, y'all to build that. So we just want everybody to continue to follow us on our Instagram pages. At- yes. Make sure y'all follow. Make sure y'all follow. Make sure y'all follow this journey. Make sure that y'all share this story. Uh, y'all share their stories that they have. Just get invested in this whole journey because it's something very beautiful and and when i say they need the support for bigger things do that and you'll see the manifestation of that big thing for sure yes. yeah. yeah yeah don't be afraid to reach out i mean yeah mm-hmm. support, like we have a lot of interaction um, with our new followers from all over the world and we would love to continue that you know with questions and uh, advice and yeah, tips. We love that. We, we, we love to you know communicate and interact so. yeah wedding advice honeymoon advice mm-hmm all types of advice. You can you can reserve all the other advice. That we do. <laughs> yeah. What other advice are you insinuating? Yeah, we we got the argument down. We good. You know, I don't even know what you and your husband was arguing about last night. You got to do it. <laughs> we don't have those issues over here. So, Ashley, what do you do for a living? I am a vegan chef and content creator, and hopefully soon to be author. There it is. There it is. Uh, I, I've saw you. Uh, I've looked at your page, and if you had a restaurant, I would be vegan because I would be eating some of that good stuff you make. Uh, I was like, God, this is this looks really doggone good. You know what I'm saying? The point is for you to be able. Yeah, but I just don't. I just it's just not in my spirit. The thing about I, this food is it looks good and it tastes good. See, you 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 spoiled. You know, you yeah. you get this Bad every day. Dream. I haven't always been that spoiled. <laughs> Yeah. Let's not get it twisted. What happened? What you mean? She wasn't I'm, cooking like that before. I'm just saying, when when in relationships, you have to be upfront about oh. what you want and you need. Uh, that was a woman. conversation. Oh, talk then. You know what, I'm saying? what happened? I mean, I don't know. Because you was a it. chef. You you was a chef, right? Well, yeah. Well, I wasn't cooking. I wasn't cooking like that. But this was before being vegan. But this you was, was a before. chef before you were vegan, right? No, I wasn't. I wasn't cooking for a living. Now, okay. This is actually, I was a nanny for seven years. She wasn't cooking at all. <laughs> yes, I was. I was cooking for myself. <laughs> when we first got together, there's a difference for real. There's a difference, especially as a woman, between cooking for yourself and then now there's a man there judging you, <laughs> judging if they gonna marry you off of how you making a piece of chicken. And that's for real. That's the type of pressure men don't have. Uh, we do. We get pressure other way. I'm judging him off of that. You're judging me on you judge the other stuff. So, so on yeah, other stuff. For sure. but yeah. Anywho. <laughs> yeah, women, y'all judge us on other stuff. But no, stuff. he definitely expressed yeah. that he wanted a woman in the kitchen. Yeah. And there are so many women that don't cook. There really are. And there's nothing wrong with that. Cooking is not for everybody. I understand. That I was understand. that was one of the biggest mm-hmm. things in our relationship that really started to get me. Cause like I literally told her I cannot marry a girl that doesn't cook. I literally said those words out of my mouth. This was like, yeah, don't get me wrong. I also don't agree that. Women should just be in the kitchen cooking yeah, for y'all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So say to each that. their own. I, didn't say I cook all. for my men because I like to. But, but you don't have after to. that conversation, you know what I mean? After that conversation. <laughs> you don't have to. Yeah, because I don't like that. After that conversation, when we, when we became vegan, she started cooking and like, you know what I mean? Well, it changed the cr- game. It changed the game. And for her to go from not doing something like that and to me being able to communicate what I needed from a woman and then her doing it to this level. It started to change. Because she did it on a big level. She done got big a whole level. brand wrapped mm-hmm. yeah. around cooking. We went vegan. Like, well, I was cooking. really cooking, and then boom, we went vegan, and it almost it throws everything. Everything you knew about cooking and food is now gone. Yeah. <laughs> You're like a newborn baby learning to walk again. <laughs> we was starving. 
<laughs> so you said you had to learn huh? I mean you don't have a choice I mean you yeah can't survive off of french fries and yeah. but even, a, even after that this passion came out of that you know what I mean? yeah. this whole vegan chef this passion because well, it gave me a passion for food I mean you really start learning about what you've been putting inside of your mouth all mm-hmm. these years and it's actually scary it's, it's actually extremely scary that's interesting. I always say that, see, I don't call couples husband and wife. I, I, I like to say, yeah, your husband, wife, you're that. But I I want my purpose partner. And so when I hear sure. stuff like that, that's your purpose partner. That he said, hey, I want a woman that cooks. And then you're like, oh, well, no, 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 no. You finally embraced it. Then it took you to a whole nother level of veganism and then opened up another door where that's your whole brand. You have a, a, a huge crazy. Instagram page it's of just cooking. Crazy. Like he said, you don't cook. You said, yes. I don't think I should be. Now, I ain't going to be no woman out in the kitchen. And your whole brand is based on these ama- amazing meals that you prepare. And even before that, like I was working for private chefs and then I started working at really popular restaurants. And I mean, that's re- and that's when I developed Graceful Vegan and was like, I can do this alone. You know, we can eliminate all the crap, basically. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, COVID happened. And and then that's where your whole brand just yeah. took off. But it is. It's it's very full circle. Yeah. That is crazy. Very full I circle. I love it. I love it. What's that full circle experience for you, producer, actor? Uh, full circle experience. How has she... How has she um, push you in, in, in your your goals and career. Uh, full circle. Um, so when I first moved off, uh, moved to Los Angeles, I was a social worker. I was working at high schools with kids, and um, and you were doing at that time. You were you were like a nanny. You were doing like all types of little small jobs mm-hmm. and things like that. And she had she was doing background on TV shows. Uh, she was like sitting in the audience, getting paid to sit in the audience and watch shows yeah. and all that kind of stuff. And um, I had gotten laid off of my job and I was starting to pursue, you know, my I was starting to figure out my own thing and um, I needed money. So she she talked me into kind of doing like the background thing and getting on set. And the first day I got on set, it was just I was just like, yo, this is. This is where I'm supposed yep. to be. Like I was walking That's so around. Crazy. People was thinking I was the actor. They were doing all. I just I had favor instantly when I was in, in that in that in that um industry. Right once I walked in, I had favor, and I I know what that feels like. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I was just like, all right, let me stay here and see where see what what's for me. You know yeah. What I mean? And then you it know, just took off. It took off just like you know, just like just like her cooking and it just took off. And then and, but you people know, say all the time about you like how quickly he went like zero to a hundred, like in the industry. Like I couldn't be more proud of you. Baby. Yeah. But it was just like a, it was a full circle moment for sure. Because, you know, she was somebody who introduced this Avenue of this to me, not even knowing that I was going to take it and take it to here. You know what I'm saying? So, and now it's literally how you make a living. It's yeah. crazy. When I say that's so beautiful to me, that's why I say when you link up with the right person, they will bring out the best in you. So true. We literally gave each other our careers. Hmm. That's crazy. Y'all can follow them on social media because I because I get I start getting emotional at this point so I ain't finna start crying because it's 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 beautiful like that stuff is beautiful to me and and the road the road to it uh, how organic it was and you could manipulate him into getting this space no. uh, it just is and I wouldn't have wanted to I'm yeah like, actor what happened to social work yeah it's like it's just it's hey this is what I do here's this and I always say that. When God chooses our mates for us, he puts a time capsule inside of that mate that gets released in the moment that you need it most. So, for instance, it's like you get to year 50 and um, um, or, you know, you're 50 years old and y'all met when you were 30 or whatever. That is something that was deposited in you that you have no idea about and that he'll need it the most at that time. You go, oh, yeah, I remember when I was in high school. We studied this, this, this. You'd be like, how'd you... What did you do? Oh yeah, I was in. That was one of my little my, my little electives in school, and we did this, this, this. I can help you with that. And he's like, "Oh my God, where'd you know all this stuff from?" It's because it was a time capsule that God placed inside of you that gets released and opened up at the time when you need it most. You find couples that uh, end up getting struck with a with a with an illness or whatnot, and then that their 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 purpose partner says, "Yeah, yeah, uh, 
my brother, my mom, my cousin, my uncle suffer from that terminal illness. And I was the person that I was a caretaker for them. And so I know how to help you in this moment. He's like, oh my God, my wife just knows everything. Oh, my husband knows everything, you know, but it was that time capsule that released. And it's such a beautiful moment when I hear it in real time like this, where it's like, oh yeah, I was doing this at first and I no longer do that. And then he was saying he wanted me to cook. And I was like, I ain't gonna be no woman to cook. And then now I'm cooking and now that's my purpose. And now everybody is following me. I got close to 50, you got 50,000 now. Is it about 50 now? Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. 52. Yeah, 50, 52,000 people watching you. And it's like, but this is the woman that said, hey, I don't cook. I did. I was <laughs> like, I ain't gonna be cooking for no man. Mm-hmm. I'm cooking for that man all day, every day. She is. <laughs> I ain't gonna cook for no man. I cook for myself. I ain't gonna cook for no man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's this crazy stuff that we make up instead of just saying, no, the person that you love, you should want to cook for them. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I mean, you will. You yeah. will. Well, some people will. Yeah. Because some people just be like, well, that's how I show I, my love. Yeah. And that's why I say we got to show our love in the way that the person needs it most, not yeah, what makes us comfortable. That. Not comfortable be like, well, I don't do that. I'm sorry. You. This is just me. Now, nah, you, you, you need to accept me for who I am. And it's like, I accept you for who you are, but can you, like, love me the way I need to be loved? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you just, girl, you just, you ask for too much. And it's like, so you want to deprive me of this moment, or would you like for me to get that from somewhere else? Boom. And that's the crazy thing about it, and that's why we got to love each other on a high level. But listen, it's been an honor talking to you guys. You guys are amazing. Y'all are fascinating. I knew I had to have y'all on the uh, podcast. Uh, he even hit me up the other day. He was like, what are some of the questions? I said, I don't send questions. We just talk. Okay. You know, and I said that I don't, I have no preparation on what's going to be discussed. I just allow the spirit to move and we just talk. And so this is an amazing, transparent, lit conversation that we've had today. I honor y'all. Uh, y'all are amazing. And hopefully I get an invite to the wedding. Yeah. Uh, and so this is amazing. So, hey, y'all give it up for my new homies, Quentin and Ashley Brunson. Yes. <laughs> you heard that. And that's on period. That's on period. Y'all <laughs> take care. Ladarian thrusted suddenly into Child Protective Services in 2015. My nephew, black, a boy. The likelihood of being adopted outside of kinship, slim to none. Armani, 16 years old, black, a boy, with five years in the foster care system before I even knew his name. The likelihood of ever being adopted? Yep, you guessed it. Slim to none. While Ladarian and Armani were trying to survive and barely thrive in an overpopulated and underfunded foster care system, I was living my own life, doing well professionally. Having been a single father with a daughter who at that point was doing well in college, it was my time to live my life, right? Wrong. I felt unsettled, tireless, agitated. There are just too many of our black children stuck in ambiguity and in the limbo of the foster care system. In 2017, I legally adopted my nephew, Ladarian. Fast forward to 2019, I had no ties to this other young king, but I felt God instructed me to adopt him also, and I obeyed. Starting over with parenting should have been enough, right? Working with various foster care and adoption agencies to help bring awareness to the countless young black kings in the foster care system should have decreased my agitation, right? Joining the board of directors of Advantage Adoption, an organization that helps find permanent adoptive homes for children in foster care should have led to some type of resolve, right? No, not at all. None of it felt like I had done enough. I now realize that every one of those experiences was laying the fundamental foundation for my life's mission, Kingdom Royale. Kingdom Royale will be a luxury, state-of-the-art home for foster boys. Our first location will be in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. We will utilize the whole person approach that instills identity, empowers them to advocate for themselves, and enlightens them regarding new perspectives and limitless options that they thought were impossible. Though the young kings will attend the local public schools that are in proximity to Kingdom Royale, our at-home curriculum will broaden their worldview through participating in the arts, attending various cultural events, learning about and engaging in multifaceted discussions about current events and even relevant historical contexts, introducing them to gardening and landscaping and even caring for our animals on our farm and on-site stables. 
We just launched our startup capital campaign with the goal of raising $2.8 million. Now, why $2.8 million? Well, in 2017, I created a web series in which I performed random acts of kindness for targeting the homeless community. One of the most notable successes was that one of the videos went viral, garnering 28 million views. However, one of my biggest regrets is that I didn't raise a single dollar to help in implementing a more sustainable plan for the homeless community. So throughout the years, with much remorse, I reflected on not maximizing that moment. I knew if at that time, just 10% of the viewers donated $1, we would have raised at least two point eight million dollars that could have really established long-term support for the homeless community or at least started a long-term initiative to do so this is my do-over this is our new beginning together we can attack this at the root by specifically helping our homeless black boys who are already disproportionately represented in the american foster care system I'm Lataris R. Whitfield. I've been nominated for three regional Emmys documenting my work with the homeless as well as my personal adoption journey. Despite those accolades, the greatest award for me is truly providing the infrastructure for a transformed life. Visit KingdomRoyale.com for more details. Crown a king and make a donation today. Didn't you enjoy Quentin and Ashley? Listen, Ashley is a firecracker. Listen, I love it when people are able to just keep it lit. And, man, I appreciate them for being so transparent. Like, shout out to y'all, man. I love y'all's journey. Um, it's quite unconventional, if I do say so myself, but I love it. I love it that it's authentic and true to who you are. And so I just speak blessings over um, your relationship, and I pray that God continues to cover y'all and uh, keep y'all together for a lifetime. So, you know, definitely want to keep y'all lifted up on that. Well, here's my favorite part of the podcast where I manifest my future wifey. <sighs> December the 1st, 2021. Dear future wifey, I love you. I love the way you think, the way you speak, the Disciplined silence when holding your tongue because you're so skillful at not bruising my ego. You are the workmanship of God in every way. Your intellect is unmatched. Your beauty permeates from the inside out. Your class is in a class of its own. Your finesse can finesse itself. I get hot inhaling your aura because you're that dope. I fiend for your presence. I yearn for you like a baby does its pacifier. I passed the fire, healed past firing hers, you know, the one who unfortunately were placeholders before you. The cold weather has me wishing I could snuggle up to your mind, body, and soul. I'm in a mood to write a never ending love letter to you, but I'll resist. Just know I love you. And that's on Adam and Eve, your future husband. Thank you for listening to the Dear Future Wifey podcast. Remember, be lit, live intentionally and transparently, and don't stop loving. Make sure to subscribe to our Dear Future Wifey YouTube channel. We're available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and Stitcher. We welcome your support. Simply share our podcast with your friends and family.